All right, um, let's begin. Um, it's a bit late, so let's 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 get going. So, um, hello everyone. I'm Hans Holmberg. Um, I work for Western Digital Research, and I spent a lot of time uh, the last couple of years looking into how we can make nice workloads, um, nice use cases that play nice with Flash work well with um, some storage. And we built something called ZenFS that uh, does um, file system. Uh, it's, it's basically a user space file system that uh, enables uh, key value LSM based uh, stores to do efficient data placement onto um, some storage devices. And um, today, I would like to talk about how we can take the lessons learned we have from that project and try to apply it to um, general purpose uh, Linux file systems that's out there today and uh, supports uh, some block devices. But first, um, I would like to define the problem that, that we're trying to solve here. And for me, zone storage enables two things, uh, better media capacity usage, so we can use more of the media if we use the zone block device interface. Uh, for SMR, is because we write things uh, sequentially, we can pack more data onto the spinning rust. Uh, for CNS SSDs, uh, we can get rid of the over-provisioning that's there to accommodate for garbage collection. <laughs> CNS SSDs does not need to do any garbage collection to, to move data around um, to do the normal reclaim. But that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on how we can get improved performance today through less garbage collection. And I would argue that less garbage collection requires some form of smart data placement. So we need to make informed decisions wherever we place the data to separate it in a way so we can do efficient reclaim. If we don't do that, we'll end up um, at the same situation we have with conventional SSDs. So conventional SSDs cannot keep different files apart when they uh, write things out into arrays units on, 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 the, on Flash. So after the uh, file writes have gone through the block interface, um, they're anonymous to the conventional SSD. And the conventional SSD has to, is forced to place different files being written at the same time into the same arrays units. And that causes fragmentation, and we have to do, and then conventional SSD has to migrate files and do basically garbage collection. We can avoid that on CNS SSDs because we know about the race units on the drive, and we can make decisions on, on, on separating files into different zones. So once a file is deleted, we can reclaim um, the whole race unit without moving any data around. So that seems like a really naive and simplistic approach. So would that actually work? Well, we've tried it out. Um, we built something that works for RocksDB and TerraDB. And ZenFS is not a full POSIX file system. Um, we don't do implicit updates. We only support append-only writes. Um, but it works. It supports the things that RocksDB and TerraDB requires. And it's purpose built for those workloads. So those are the limitations. And it does separate files into different zones at the time of writing. And if we can't fill up a zone completely, um, we try to co-locate files with the same um, life expectancy. So if we have uh, two, I have it written um, a file to a zone, and we have some space left. We try to place uh, an incoming file, file write, uh, that will match the lifetime of the file that's already been written to the zone, if that makes sense. So when both these files have been deleted, we can do reclaim of that zone directly. And we've implemented that. Um, we have integrated that uh, with RocksDB and all the way up to um, several different databases. Um, right now, we support uh, 
Icona MySQL uh, database um, out of the box. You can just download the Debian package and you'll get Zenefa support and uh, can use some block devices um, uh, out of the box. We have some instructions on that for on some storage.io. And um, we've been testing this quite extensively. Um, so we worked with Precona, we worked with uh, Bytons, uh, uh, Concron and team uh, to make this work with TireTB and their databases. Um, so it works. We can write data, get it back, uh, basic um, file system requirements, and we can store it all on a own block device. So the question here is, do we get any performance benefits? Because that's what we're after, right? Well, uh, we tested this and benchmarked it um, against XFS using conventional drives. So we're testing on the same media, just different file systems, different uh, block interfaces. And it does outperform XFS for heavy write and, and mixed workloads. So when we trigger garbage collection on the conventional drive, um, CNFS outperforms XFS because we don't do any garbage collection. We can completely avoid it if we configure it to do so. And because we avoid doing garbage collection, we improve both throughput and QoS. There's no background writes happening. That means we can do more user writes. And there's less background work being done. That also means that we don't get any uh, read disturbances, uh, no write disturbances, better tail latencies for both reads and writes. And usually, this comes at a cost of uh, space amplification. Just let me finish here. Uh, but uh, we manage this so we get on par with XFS. Uh, if we enable a bit of garbage collection, we do a little bit better. If we don't have any garbage collection at all, uh, we um, uh, do a little worse. But it's like very close in, in our benchmarks. OK, I have a question. What about X4? Uh, we've compared to X4 as well, and X4 does worse than XFS when we do a comparison. It's strange they have another result. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, <laughs> benchmarking is hard, and it depends on what you benchmark, right? We've been running these workloads. Um, so uh, what, I'm, what I'm showing here is like micro benchmarks on RocksDB level using dbbench, field random and overwrite, and uh, old TP workloads on uh, on Precona MySQL level, um, running normal transactional stuff. But we do this after filling up the drive to a reasonable amount and doing some amount of overwrite. So we actually trigger some GC on the drive, right? We try to simulate a, a drive that's been used for a while. If you just if you do this on an empty drive, you see no difference, right? Yeah. I have a question regarding the, you said that you avoid a garbage collection in a conventional na a namespace device, right? N no, we avoid it on, 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 uh, on ZNS. Device, yeah. ah, okay. Okay. So I misunderstood. Ah, so I have no question there. Yeah. So there's no, no, no garbage collection being done on a CNS device and, and, and we can avoid it in, in, in CNFS too. Not in all use cases, but I'll come, I'll come to that. So this works well for. What use cases, right? Doesn't work for, for everything. So RocksDB and uh, TerraDB has a possibility of configuring file size. Uh, so if we match that up uh, with the available zone capacity, um, that works really well. We don't need to do GC, great performance as we showed, and OK, space, space amplification. But if we have files being written that is significantly smaller than the capacity of a zone, um, that doesn't work so well. And what we have to do, or what Concon uh, and the Pythons did, guys did, is to optimize compaction for CNS. So that's like even tighter application integration. And um, they report good performance of that, and um, they needed a bit of garbage collection to make that work, but they got, I think, um, decent, decent results. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Concon. Um, and they had to do that because uh, when they separate key values uh, in their implementation, um, 
the files need to be smaller to avoid uh, space amplification. I think there's a question. Yeah. So yeah, I have one question. So how how's the trim commands are uh, managed in the test, and then also so for when when comparing the performance in the previous slides and. I think for, for XFS, right, uh, on the previous one, yeah. uh, it, we're using trim. Yeah, this is on the, by default. Because that was on a conventional drive, right? Yes. XFS versus yeah, NFS. Exactly. Test, right. So, so, so it's just on um, when you're allocating a new zone or the, the, the So did you trim the zone you're not using anymore? Like, did you trim the file when you're done with it? Uh, right. I mean, that's up to XFS to do, right? And it's enabled by default. Right? OK. So there's no tuning or no optimization on XFS to get the best performance. Oh no, I didn't. I did, did run it with. I didn't try the whole parameter space of optimizing it. Oh, okay. so maybe and, you can do better. But. Yeah, and another question is, so how's the performance when actually running the garbage collection on ZenFS? Sorry. ZenFS. Yeah. So probably there's some overhead when when you know. So at some point, even on ZN, ZNS, ZenFS should do some migration as well, right? Well, um, we can, if you align things enough, uh, we, we, can, we can add have a little bit of space amplification, and uh, the compaction process will take care of that for us. Files will be deleted, and uh, we've placed files in a way that we can reclaim a whole zone uh, after all the files that have been mapped to it has been deleted. So we don't do, need to do that. Uh, but it does cost a little bit of space amplification. So we have implemented garbage collection uh, to like optimize for space as well. So we had a few percent of uh, um, right amplification and uh, we get, I mean, some, something like more 5% more space or something like that. So yeah, so actually, that. yeah, I was, I, I'm, I'm also working on similar things in mobile side and then one um, interesting point in terms of performance to me was that what is the actual gap, you know, performance difference when we learn the garbage collection by the whole site versus doing that one in internal FTL? Because when you think about, you know, learning the garbage collection the whole site and we need to read out and then write the data from. Yeah, yeah, just moving the garbage collection over doesn't add much, right? Because uh, so. cause it, it has some performance regression, like 10% will be, you know, consumed by. DMA transfer. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if you start needs to start moving things around, but we can avoid it pretty much. That's that's the that's the key. Mm, yeah. 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 I have a small question. Uh, RocksDB doesn't uh, do exact uh, file sizes in SS tables. Do you, what did you do? You something smart about that, or just like well, we. Uh, I mean, we. As I say, we we try to fill up if a uh, file does not fill an entire zone, we use the right lifetime hints to place another file that has a similar lifetime. So it it works. Um, and that's that's sort of the trick to handle uh, the misalignment of all that, because you can't guarantee that RocksDB will, will can I do, have do a perfect a, workload for you. Can I have a follow-up? So you you put them like uh, one file after the other, right? Do you, do you have a problem that you need to avoid writing in the middle of the zone, or? Uh, no, I mean we do best effort. Like we, if it's if you know, sometimes compaction results in a very small file, and then we just try our best to to match lifetimes. Okay. And uh, uh, I mean it, it doesn't degrade. Uh, uh, space amplification too much. A quick question: the the lifetime hint comes from RocksDB itself, yes. right? And from your experience, is that quite so? That's been quite good. That's been good enough to get. It has the information you need. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that that's good enough, and it's not perfect. It's a few levels, right? We okay. Could probably make it better. Okay. Right. Well, we didn't want to change RocksDB too much. We wanted just to explore if um, if what already provided and, and these hints are provided actually to uh, to the to xfs and f2fs as well well they do nothing with that though right right like so right right the, yeah it's the, available to them but okay. uh, i think yeah i think if f2fs can can try to do something with it i am dug, dug very deep into it uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay the api is still there i think
But okay. ac actually, AI, those, yeah. those kind of temperature-based, you know, hot core separation is actually done by FTFS right now. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is that you can just give the IF called IF to give the temperature hint profile. Then oh. that's it. That you probably can simply compare the performance between. FTFS yeah, we ha we, we have compared just putting F2FS there. Uh, we have done that in a paper we published last year. And we do see some performance benefits, but mostly in, in, in terms of like tail latencies. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we don't get uh, a lot of, we, we get worse throughput than XFS and conventional drives, but we get a little bit more better quality of service for that. We didn't dig down, dig into and see what we could improve in F2FS, but maybe we can like look into that now, right? Yeah. Maybe it's time to do that. That's my point here. So those are lessons learned. Um, and like, OK, CNFS works, but it's just limited to RocksDB and TerraDB. It's only built for that. We try to optimize as much as we can for that. It's not a general purpose file system. Um, and um, people generally want general purpose file systems because that's what they're used to. And it scales very well to new use cases. So the question here, can we bring some of the lessons learned to FFS, ButterFS, BcacheFS? Um, can we start improving that now when we know a little bit more about which workloads that could play well with CNS? So what can we improve? Can we improve the uh, uh, file system block allocators to play nicely with CNS-friendly workloads to reduce GC? I mean, we're not going to make everything work exceptionally well with CNS, but the use cases that seem to work well uh, and, and are flash-friendly, uh, can we make those play well with regular file system. Yes, we can. That's at least what I think. And I think we can do that by simply simply separate files into different songs and writing. That will, I mean, if we completely do that, uh, we will save a lot of garbage collection. And then optionally use uh, write lifetime hints to collect locate files. And as I said, that's, I mean, a lot of that was removed from the kernel. Um, I think the ABI is still there. Uh, um, or we can revive it and do something better, but we will need something like that to make it even like getting up to close where, where CNFS is. So what, how would we get from like here to, to there? Um, uh, we can just start experimenting with block allocators um, and, and like start doing that together in the community uh, and share uh, good, workloads that we could optimize for. Uh, because data placement improvements translates to less garbage collection, um, and that results in better performance uh, throughput-wise and, and quality of service-wise, better tail latencies. And I think we can do small improvements to what's out there today um, to get uh, pretty big wins. And this is definitely not trivial to implement. Um, you have to uh, manage active zone limits and all of the CNS specifics, uh, but it's pretty fun work. And uh, we have automated benchmarks available. So uh, if you want to test what we're testing uh, and the workloads and the methodology we use, uh, you can just do that. And if you have any questions, just reach out because we've been doing this uh, and um, it takes some time to get right. A quick question on that. So it's uh, like publicly the the whole, uh, all the workloads you used, methodology, all that's documented and easily reproducible out there. Right? Like there's yeah, a we website. Have a, we have oh. a script. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and the, like, it, like, is it is it on the zone storage.io or somewhere that we yes. can easily get there, right? Versus like buried in the uh, yeah, uh, repo I, somewhere. I mean, if you go to the CNFS GitHub, they look at the readme. Okay. Um, uh, okay. You can go there and and and. And, and find your way to the, the benchmarks okay. script we, we run. And I mean, if it's not obvious how to use it, just open an issue and okay. we'll, we'll help you out. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, one, one thing to note is that uh, you don't necessarily need the lifetime hints interface for file systems. You can play with uh, directory directories and how you place files in directories. Oh, right. okay. Uh, yeah. Assuming that files that will go together in the same directory are of the same class or same lifetime. And actually, 
it's been used a long time uh, uh, in file system is that uh, the file system tr try to allocate files that belong to the same directory together or close by because that is, there's the assumption that they are going to be read and written together. That is together an excellent idea and it scales much better, right? You can you can define how many well, classes you want. It, it's or... kind of a course uh, 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 API in a sense. Well, uh, it's been around forever and it's, it's easy. I mean, you just look at the parent of the inode and if that gives you yeah, yeah. It, then any application can separate it as long as it is stored in the right directory, right? Yeah. Now we can use that. Use that. That's a much better idea. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Yeah, any more? I, I have a question. Thank you. So, uh, you, measure, you mentioned, um, I think, tail latency. What I'm wondering is, um, as you start to fill up the SSD close to capacity, like say, for instance, 90% or 95%, I imagine that at, at that point, you're potentially forced to move more data to preserve pre-existing data. And maybe that would mess with the lifetime hit, uh, the, the careful lifetime hint based placement you've done. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that would have an impact on tail latency that you've observed. I mean, if you stuff. start, have, yeah, I mean, um, GC is only triggered when you start filling up the, the drive. It's, right now, we have a super simple GC algorithm that just starts moving things around to free up space when it's more than 80% full. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we start moving things around, uh, we have an impact on tail latency because we do more writes, right? Yeah. Yeah, but we do, it's, it's fairly little, like right? it's 2-3% uh, versus a conventional drive, drive that might uh, have a very right amplification factor of like two or three. So it's, um, we I, don't have to do much to, to get up to far. I, I think I understand what you're saying. What I'm trying to say is that there's a different case when you wrap the drive and you like fill the drive and then keep on writing. But there's also a different case when you preserve a huge chunk of the data that's on the drive, right? So for instance, I could easily wrap the drive, but only have 20% um, of the blocks preserved and I just, keep on overwriting the same set of blocks over yeah, and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. But I could have a very different profile if I have like 95% of the blocks or 99% of the blocks preserved, in which case, um, if, you, if you have a file system, it has to uh, continue to serve the, the other blocks that were not overwritten. So I imagine that in that case, you actually then need to move more data and that might show up in tail latencies. I, I don't know if that made sense. Yeah, I mean, we, sense. yeah, okay. But we, yeah, we compared, I, I set it up so we fill up 90% of the drive uh, and with uh, first filling it with random, random key values and then overriding it for some time sure. and then seeing what the performance is at that point. And we, we do better. In, in okay. uh, well, yeah. I'm curious if you would see a difference then if you tried with 95% and then 97%. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it also yeah. breaks down at some point, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the case. Like, Rocksdb um, doesn't play well when you start, I mean, getting that close. I don't think any, like, system administrator would sleep soundly if you fill things up to 95%, right? So, <laughs> not, like, 90% is, 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 like, I think that's, uh, that's sort of uh, probably the pain point. All right. Uh, thank you. And then you're the next speaker. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs>